what what are the different I mean when you talk about a bond and you talk about like you know assessing a bond what what are some of the types of characteristics of of the different bonds that you know we we can kind of see and and what are those okay so yeah. um I think a couple of um questions in there and I'll probably just unwrap it you know step by step. Uh, so first of all, you know, the different ty- types of bonds. So you have your government bonds, you know, you have your corporate bonds. Uh, these are very simple, straightforward bonds where, you know, you give them money and then after a couple of years or a certain period of time, they pay you back together with, you know, interest. Now, there are also other bonds as well. Like say, for example, like what you said, uh, what you call your cocoa bonds or your, this is the short form, but the longer form is called your contingent convertible bonds. Okay. Right, it's a bit complex here, and I don't know. Sometimes I really hate the bankers which come up. Okay, with names. I, I guess, I guess. Okay, right. So contingent convertible just means that if you hit a certain requirement or a certain condition, then it converts like It changes. So maybe uh, if I now debt, so it changes into equity. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And the reason why this exists is because a lot of times, you know, issuers or companies, you know, they are not very comfortable with issuing bonds, mm. right? Because number one, these bonds, when I when I borrow money from you, Anthony, I have to actually pay you back. Yeah. Now, if I actually yes, borrow, should. yeah, I should, <laughs> you should, but, you should. But, but, <laughs> if, but if the companies don't want to pay you back, yeah. if I want to borrow money from you, I say, hey, Anthony, I'm not going to pay you back for a very long time. I do not know when, but I have no intention of doing so. So what do I do, right? I can do what I call a, conting- a contingent convertible. What this means is that I'm going to borrow money from you, but I'm going to tell you that there's no maturity date. I, I will say that, look, you're not going to get your money back. And the only way to get your money back is after you invest in these bonds, you know, you can actually trade it off in, you know, the financial market, yep. uh, in the bond market. Yeah. But the important thing for the issuer here is that they don't have a maturity date. That's why they are very incentivized to actually borrow money using these instruments. And the kicker here, why it's called contingent convertible, is that they give a clause, okay, you might think that, hey, I'm going to get my money back. How in the world am I going to get a stake here yeah. you know, in the company? So what these guys do, these companies do, is that say, okay, I'm, I'm going to borrow money from you, but if my company doesn't do well, right, if the value of these bonds start to drop into a certain amount, or if this, the value of this company start to drop uh, or deteriorate or the fundamentals start to drop, this set of bonds, or what we call cocos, will be converted into stocks. So oh. you, you will invest now in stocks <laughs> rather than the bonds. Wait, wait, wait. So you convert at the issuer's option. Yes. yes. And they tend to convert when the issuer is not performing. Exactly. So you are sort of getting hit. Hey, that, that's rubbish, right? Because you want bonds <laughs> to be safe. I, I'm sorry, right? Because you, you, you are buying bonds to be safe. You want to be, you know, preferred hmm. to equity. You are, you are in priority to equity. You know, you are debt instead of equity. And you are taking on less risk that way for less return. Yep. Right? That's the whole point of it, you know? So exactly. if you are going to say, actually, you know what? When If the risk is going to realize I'm going to convert you to equity and degrade you again, oh, that... that kind of sounds like it shouldn't be the case. Yeah. Yep. So um this is this is this is one actually one instrument where uh people where actually people are where a lot of investors are looking at because they offer a much higher yield, for example. And it's also very popular um among all the different banks, right? Because this this helps to sort of build up their financial position or their financial health because they can I can, can actually they can actually borrow money without ever having to pay you back. And they can convert it into equity and meet their basal requirements, right? Because as a bank, you have capital requirements and all of that. Mm. Sneaky. Yeah. Very, very, I mean, okay, very, very clever lawyers. I'm not me. Very, very clever lawyers. But okay, interesting, right? And, and I guess the, the, the attractiveness, as you said, for investors is, you know, because of the bad terms, yep. um, you get higher yields. Yep. So right. the sister instrument of COCOs, so COCOs are typically issued or raised from banks, financial institutions, right? So you have your banks, you have your insurance companies. Now, how about corporates, right? So you're talking about companies outside of the financial industry. You know, you have, say, your uh, construction business, your manufacturing business, your consumer business, so on and so forth. You know, do they also have this kind of option? Yes, they do, right? So this is what you call a perpetual security or what you call preferred shares, right? Again, right, I raise money from you and I pay you, you know, a certain coupon every single year. And again, I don't have to pay you back the money, right? So preferred shares are instruments, again, they are one form of debt instrument where they borrow money from, you know, from you, from myself. And they say, you know, I'm not going to pay you back. So, you know, I'm going to take your money. I'm going to hold it 
all the way to until the company fails or you know or if you oh, decide I feel to like sell back. yeah so <laughs> wait, wait. so that's one prefer, one other instru- instrument wait I, I prefer shares the same as um perpetuals yes yes okay and so so these are perpetual securities is that but you know i mean they're called, they called perpetual securities they're essentially debt they pay you a coupon right yeah, yeah. i mean i've got to ask you this Anthony, because these are all the legal terms yeah. come, came out from the lawyers. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's terrible. Ter- lawyers are terrible. Okay, i tell you first. <laughs> yeah, so um, so preferred shares um, have the same features as a perpetual security, but of course, in a legal term, they could be a bit different. Um, there might be some nuances, there might be some differences, and I think really because it's how they could account it or how the accountants would want to account for this uh, debt on their financial statements, right? So this sort of affects, you know, how a company's financial position or the financial health actually looks, really, really looks, right? So that is probably the reason why there's, you know, a difference in the terms or the names for it. But in essence, the features are roughly the same. Yeah. They, 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 they borrow money from you. They don't have to pay you back because there's no maturity date, but they do have that obligation to actually pay you that coupon, okay. that interest. So it's essentially... Let's say, yeah, I borrow money from you. I say, I say a hundred bucks. I pay you six percent interest every year. So every year I pay you six dollars, right? And I'll pay you six dollars essentially for the rest of my life, yep. um, because that's why it's perpetual, lah, right? Or that's why it's preferred. And you know, from the, the accounting perspective, on, on my side, it's not seen as I owe you money, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not a debt. It's not a liability. It's I think equity, mm-hmm. right? I think it's, it's equity. So, you know, when, when people look at, oh yeah, you know, your, if you are looking look at the company as an equity and you're trying to invest in that, you know, of course, REITs and all these property companies do this, right? And, and you look at their balance sheet and you go, oh yeah, I got a lot of assets, not a lot of liabilities, but they got a lot of preferred securities, right? That, that's actually quite terrible because they do have to pay, you know, a lot of coupons for the preferred securities, even mm-hmm. though, you know, it's, you know, we, we keep thinking about it as good for the company, but it, it is actually still a, a liability, an ongoing liability la, in yeah. a sense because they need to pay interest. Is there a way, I mean, from the company's perspective, right? Is there a way that, you know, they can kind of get out of a perpetual obligation? Because it, it does sound quite terrible, right? You, you have to, I have to pay you $6 forever. Why if, you know, I, I pay you for 100 years, 200 years, like I, I actually end up losing money. <laughs> Yeah, you know? I mean, they can always buy back the okay. perpetual securities. Mm-hmm. So they can always say, you know, look, I don't wish to actually pay you anymore. Yep. And I decide to buy it, you know, from everyone. And they have that option to do so. Oh, okay. So they, so, so they can kind of just like redeem it or yeah, like so redeem, pre- that's repurchase. The, yeah. So that's the word to actually use it. Um, That's the technical word to use it. So they can actually redeem those uh, per- preferred or perpetual securities mm-hmm. uh, from you. Oh, right? okay. Okay. But again, it's their choice whenever yes. they want to. I don't have a say if I do want to get my money back because I need it for whatever reason. I have to sell it in the secondary market. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Do you like do, do you like higher yield, Anthony? I mean, I like money. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but I also like to get my money back. Yeah, so it's interesting here because uh, the reason why people love all these uh, instruments, mm-hmm. you know, your perpetual securities, your cocos, is because they offer a much higher yield yep. to compensate for the lack of, you know, a typical bond feature, which is your maturity. Mm. And, you know, you typically can see the yields are actually much higher and it's yep. actually more attractive. Um, now, what's, what's more interesting... Back to interesting, the first lesson, right? Don't just chase you yeah. because you, you might be getting into all these, you know, different types of instruments that you go, hmm, there, there are some risks here. Yeah, right? correct. Yeah. So, what's risky here is to actually buy into uh, companies or financial institutions where they can get a bit risky Right, they might not be financially healthy, so buying into some of these perpetuals or these cocos can be a bit risky. But it could be something where it's interesting, where you're looking at you know high quality financial institutions, high quality companies which are doing you know which are is- issuing perpetual securities or cocos. Right, so that's where even though you have you know you might not get paid back, but you have a higher yield, but you also get the safety from a high quality company. Mm. Or a bank. Yeah, but I, I guess the the answer to that is well, you know, but if they are really a high quality company, the spread between a, a traditional bond that they issue and a perp that they issue wouldn't be that different. Mm. Right? So so a perp would still give you maybe half percent, one percent higher, you know, but because they are such a credit worthy company, they are strong, people don't see them as feeling, you don't actually get that much higher yield, you know, just because of uh 
a difference in the function of, of the instrument they, they, they issue, uh, right? So, yeah. you know, I hire you, but they're, they're, there's, I think, again, no free lunch, right? Yeah. People I'm, give you more money, they, they wanted something, they took something in return. I mean,